Hey, how's it going? I'm Isla Golden and welcome to my vlog. Alright, okay, so this time we are going to be talking about my series, Realms in Reality, the first book of which is published. Um, this is one I think I've mentioned before where the company, the publishing company that I went with, um, kind of overpriced the first book in the series. So even though I was very much um, wary about the price that they were setting me at and actually did sort of say to them, look, I think you're overpricing it. I don't think my target audience are going to be buy this book at that price. They were like, oh, we know best. No, 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 no. Um, but I do very much feel like that book was sort of priced out of the market. Um, at this moment in time, I'm not entirely sure what to do about that. Um, I think it's going to be very complicated to sort of get the rights back um, in order to republish it with Lulu. Because I like Lulu. <laughs> they let me set my own price. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, for, for now at least, um, the first book is, is published, it's not got the cover I would want with it, um, it's way overpriced for, you know, a fledgling new author targeting at a young slash new adult audience, yeah, it's, yeah, there, there's, it's so annoying, um, having said that, the Realms and Reality series is a good series. Um, it is set within the uh, relative future reality, for those of you who know what I mean by that. <laughs> Yay! Hi guys! <laughs> Thank you for watching a lot of my vlogs. <laughs> uh, for those of you who don't, um, there is a reality within the multiverse um, that's had a lot of temporal disturbances which has caused its timeline to kind of desync with the rest of the multiverse. So although it's technically not the future, it's relatively the future compared to other realities. So like the, the date system is completely different, the you know the time period is completely different. Um, it's it is the future compared to another reality, but in its own space time, it's still sort of aligned, kind of. It's the future, but it's not the future. It's confusing. <laughs> and that's probably about as good an explanation as I can give. I think it's a better one in the book, <laughs> the first book. <laughs> um, I'm not sure, actually. I will have to check that. Anyway, um, so, this particular series, which starts with Zero Conformity as the, the first book, um, you basically follow a trio, or a group of the first book, a group of three characters in the first book, um, who get pulled into this relative future reality, um, because one of them know a lot more about this than the other two do. Um, and she is, she is very much kind of the reason why everything happens and um, the series is basically starts with them trying to escape their, their captives in, in the first book and then a series of everything else that kind of happens as the two characters who had no idea about all of this stuff before getting into this situation um, almost have to try to decide whether or not they want to go home. So sort of very much by the, the end of the series as a whole, um, whether or not they'll ever actually go home again is, you know, very much up for debate. Um, I'm not going to say what decisions either of those characters make um, or why they have to make those decisions um, or anything like that, but yeah, the, the story very much follows them and all the uh, friends and other people that they meet um, on, on this sort of journey. And 
there are lots of, of points within the, the series as a whole which are, for me, particularly exciting and particularly kind of like, yay, I love this particular moment and this particular group of characters and this particular that. And yeah, so it's quite good. And there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of grey that goes on it. Um, it also helped me to redefine certain um, characters which do get used in, in various different things in a kind of in a kind of a new way. Um, one of the the third character of the group is one of the Catalans. Um, you know, it's one of the Catalans from the four <laughs> that I mentioned. Uh, one of the three. Uh, if you, you go go and watch the um, the blog that I did on the four faces of Catalan. Um, the the Catalan that, that features in the Realms and Reality series is one of the three that were born at the same time, um, and she's very much kind of this her bit of the story, um, her sort of time to shine, um, opposed to you know the other two, who, who, one who hadn't really had hers yet, and the other who has, but in a, in a completely different series. Um, so yeah, it's it's a good it's a good little series. Uh, I can't remember at this point in time just how many books it actually is. But one of the things I sort of started doing with them is giving all the books two word titles. Um, so the first one is is zero conformity, and, and the second one is ghost machine. Um, third one, I don't know if the third one is liquid faith. But I know that is definitely one of the titles, and I think that's as far as I can go with actually remembering all the titles. <laughs> um, the series does like a number of interesting things, like the, the the first two books have very different feels from each other. The second book being kind of a bit of a murder mystery. Um, then the the third and the fourth book, you sort of take a step back and you follow completely different groups of character or group of characters um, for a while and. Yeah, you, you basically sort of start the the third book, sort of like leading up to this story being told. Then the majority of the third and the fourth book is the story being told, and then the end of the fourth book is kind of um, meeting back up to the, to the point in time where where you started with the original guys, and things then progress from there into like the fifth and then the sixth book. Um, I think there might be the seven. Now that I sort of said it like that, um, I don't. It's definitely not as long as the Tale Saga <laughs> has to be name dropped again. Um, but it's certainly one of the longest series that that I that I definitely worked on. And you know, there are like lots of ebbs and flows. There are lots of like little bits. There's some time travel that goes on later on in the series. And yeah, it's it's good. It's a good it's a good series. It's an exciting little series. Um, so I would absolutely love to work out what it is I need to do in order to republish Zero Conformity with Lulu under a much, much, much cheaper price so that I can put it back out there for people to actually affordably buy. Um, I mean, I, one thing I do want to sort of do is I want to go through and I want to re-edit it and, and stuff like that. So there's a lo little bit more work than just you know, the straightforwardness that I'm trying to imply. Uh, not that I think it's very really particularly straightforward. Um, but yeah, no, it, it's it's a case of, I think the series deserves better than it got. Um, so it's a matter of working out how to give it what it needs. And even if it's just a case of, okay, just start publishing from the second book onwards and we'll work out what to do with the first book later um or whether it's a case of you know yeah no i need to get that first book back first because you kind of miss the setup to the story of the setup the over the larger setup to everything if you don't sort of have that and it is it is it is overpriced it, it really is and i mean there is an ebook version so i would probably if i couldn't find a better way of doing it kind of get people to read the ebook and then write publish everything else separately <laughs> um, with nice nice covers because I do have it I think that's the thing the like the, the company that I work with I mean Lulu gives you so much freedom with 
designing your own cover um, and for Hyena Boy because I have to name drop it as much as possible at the moment because it is, it is coming out soon. I promise it's coming out soon. Um, with the help of a good friend of mine, I am working, finally working on the cover for Hyena Boy. And Lulu, let, you know, if you have the skills, if you have the know-how, you can create a full wraparound cover completely to your own design, completely to your own specifications, and that's kind of what we're doing at the moment. Um, but alternatively, like I did for Echo, you can design the complete front cover yourself and the complete back cover yourself, and then, you know, they will help you out with the, the spine bit or whatever else, and, and that's the thing. For a company which is basically letting you, I mean, know it's print on demand, but so is this other company. Yeah, that's the thing. The other company is also print on demand. <laughs> and that's what's so annoying and frustrated about frustrating about it is not only do they give you less options and they don't let you set your own price and they don't let you target your own audience, but they, they, they're also print on demand. They're print on demand, so it's not... You know, yeah, it's just so frustrating when you know Lulu can do it and you can set your own price and you know exactly how much you're going to get for, for each copy that sells and you know exactly, you know, you've got so much freedom, so much creative control. This this other thing is kind of like, yeah, the, the cover that I ended up for for Zero Conformity is not very good. <laughs> it's not very eye-catching. It's not what I would want it to be. And yet... I had this beautiful, absolutely amazing cover that had been designed by a friend before I'd sort of come to, to try to publish it that I really would have loved. And if I'd sort of talked about it a little bit more and, you know, stuck my guns a little bit more and gone with Lulu again, then, you know, maybe the situation would be a bit different now. Maybe, you know, things would be in a better place right now but yeah and then I think because the other thing with, with what happened with the whole zero conformity situation is that was that was the point which kind of you know I, my my health issues sort of started kind of around that time or kind of became more apparent around that time and that was sort of when I was sort of struggling with a lot of stuff so to have something where the, the control was taken away, where the creativity was taken away, where it was essentially the same service as something else. They were, they, you know, it was on their terms and not on your terms. And yeah, that was kind of the moment in time where it was very much, yeah, okay, I need to step back from this for a while. And I think, you know, had I maybe gone through Lulu again, maybe things would have ended up different. Maybe... I would be in a better position right now. Maybe I would have had like the whole of the Realms of Reality series published by now. Um, maybe I'd be making more money by now. <laughs> but, you know, when you sort of have that bit of a knock, especially during a time when, you know, other things are kind of going on in your life and making things a lot more complicated, it's it's a shame. It's, it's annoying. It's, you know, I would not have wanted things to go the way that they ended up going by by any means but that's the situation I end up with that's the position I end up in and taking a step back is what I ended up doing as, as I've said before it's not going to stop writing it's just I stopped pursuing the the publishing and the getting the work my work out there side of things because I was just so defeated at that point um, and I think that particular that particular publishing company kind of is what made me feel so defeated. I did not feel at all defeated um, when you know Time Forgets, which is the first book in the Blood Pledge of a Marriage series, um, didn't sell very well because I was an unknown writer. I didn't know about the ways that I could promote my work at that point in time. Um, um, but I, I'd gone through and, and everything was sort of on my own terms and, you know, it was my, my first sort of outing and my first sort of way of, of doing things. And I think, you know, I certainly do want to go through and tighten up that particular book anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, there, there is still work to be done. Um, 
but I I feel I feel more ashamed for what was a better edited book um, because it's been overpriced than I do of the one that you know I failed to promote properly. So you know I I don't consider either ones necessarily to be failures because. Um, a book can take off at any point in time and suddenly become a success and suddenly start selling. So they're not outright failures, although they both definitely need a lot more work being doing and republishing at some point, or at least a new editions publishing, um, especially when it's print on demand. Yeah, I just need to make them second editions. That's what I really need to do. Um, but yeah, as, as, as I said, it's, it's a case of... I feel like I took more of a knock from zero conformity because I was priced out of the market than I did for not being able to promote the book properly, even though I wasn't able to promote either book properly. Um, and certainly when they, they sort of set that price so high to begin with, it kind of made me not want to promote it because I was kind of like, I don't, I don't think I'm, I can sell at, at that sort of price, not to my target audience. That's, that's not what I want to do. I want people to be able to afford to read me and to buy me because they want to enjoy it, not because, you know, it, yeah, it, it makes me uncomfortable that it's priced that high. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, in the, the next part of the social mini series where we're sort of focusing on some of my, my projects and, and some of the things that I've done in the past um, and where they're at and where they're going, um, which I'm hoping is what this one's sort of been, um, I'm going to be doing the Blood Friendship and Marriage series, which I just mentioned. So brilliant. <laughs> okay, I hope you guys have sort of found this one interesting. Um, I know it's kind of been a little bit different to what I would have necessarily thought it was going to be, but this is what it's ended up being, so let's go with it. <laughs> anyway, hope you guys have enjoyed this one, I hope you're looking forward to the next one, and I will see you next time. See ya! <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video, feel free to check out some of my others, and if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. See ya!